but then we look at them side by side. And I'm not sure if I'm just seeing this because I want to see this, but to me it looks like it's the exact same picture but reversed. And I don't mean the rest of his head, obviously not his hair and things like that, but when we're looking at the face, we're looking at the eyes, and we have this round corner here, and then the same here. And yes, obviously, I know that this is, you know, his face, so it's going to look the same, but most of the time, if you take a pic two pictures, especially this many years apart of somebody, they're going to have slight differences to them. So, what I see here, anyways, is the eyes. I would really like someone who does Photoshop to do this and not me, because I'm just sort of guessing at this point, but a couple things that I see that are weird are it almost looks like this white spot here, this light spot, is exactly the same here. And then we also have this little divot here, and then a little dark spot here, and both at the same spot where the mouth upturns. So if you can tell me if this is at all the same or close to the same, or if I'm just seeing what I want to see, that would be great, because I'd love to hear some opinions on that. Next we have Deborah Fine. If you have seen any of her interviews, Deborah Fine is just kind of, it's just theatrical is the word for it. It's just very theatrical. The first couple articles I read about her said, oh, woman fakes death. She was um, in a vehicle on the road when Zawari started to walk towards the bus in the, or in the community college. And so she actually swerved and blocked him from carjacking her, I believe, and then, you know, kind of got shot at a few times and played dead. And that was the biggest thing about her story the day that it happened was that she got shot at and she played dead and that's how he went away. Now all of a sudden I'm looking a couple days later, Santa Monica shooting victim distracts gunman, saves woman, and they're making her out to be some kind of celebrity. And it's very interesting to me because like I said, I watched her interviews and I watched, I read stories and articles about her the day it happened, and not one thing mentioned that she saved or helped anybody. Everything was just that she had faked dead. So this is just making the conclusion that since he had to look at her and pay attention to her to make sure she was dead, she saved the woman who he carjacked, which I don't know, none of it makes any sense. I just think that it's silly and that it seems like, again, it's being the imagery. It's painting you a story. It's painting a picture for you. And it's not just, it's not just facts. It's just painting you this romanticized and just intricate story and vision. So uh, one person had sent me a couple links that say that she looks very similar to this woman named Deborah Jacobson. I'll see if I can find that. But I don't believe that it is actually the same person. Here we go, Deborah J Jacobson. I don't believe she's actually the same person. At a first glance, they look very, very similar. Oops, that's not it, sorry. They look very similar at first glance, but then if you look at her, she has brown eyes. And I understand that this can be something that can be changed, so maybe that could be something worth looking into. Um, the voices do sound the same, and she has had some kind of classical vo vocal training, so that's interesting to know as well. But um, to me, they look very different. But who knows, really, you can change a lot of your appearance just with uh, if you have enough money. So <laughs> this is another laughable thing that I found. This woman had been interviewed a couple different places that I read, and she was his preschool teacher. So that means that this woman knew him 19, roughly 19 years ago, and she's trying to say that she knows about them and their life. That year, teacher Wendy Paris encountered four-year-old John and his mother, Rhonda Abdu- I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name, no offense intended, I just do not know how to pronounce that- in a special education program at a Santa Monica public preschool. He was very withdrawn and clingy to his mother. It was obvious to me that there was trauma in the home. Okay, I, I don't know anybody who is the same person when they were four years old than they are when they're 23 years old. That's just a big joke to me. None of that can, how can they even use somebody like that as being any type of even newsworthy interview? So yeah, this is this is more of the painting the image of him being so ostracized ever since birth and oh, it was just something you couldn't prevent and things like that. This, I thought was really, really interesting when I read about this. This 
has to do with the fact when they found the pipe bomb in his house in 2006, this resource officer who um, worked at his school said this statement about him. I remember him specifically because he had the long hair. He had the black outfit on, the black trench coat, the black boots. He was very thin. He had just had that isolated look. Again, painting him as the isolated freak, as it were. Just watch out for that weird, creepy kid that doesn't like to be around anyone else. And look, he's been like this ever since preschool, says this woman who knows him so well. Um, so I, I thought, you know, the black trench coat, back to Columbine, that's very, very interesting. And I don't know if they're trying to purposely make the connection, or if maybe he was some kind of copycat, or Columbine copycat, where he kind of modeled himself after that. So, you know, something to think about there as well. Something else was that after he went on his psychiatric evaluation, the 72-hour hold that he got placed on when he was talking about um, building bombs and hurting people and things like that, was that he had this gun prohibition so that he could not have guns in his home. And, or for five years, excuse me. So that expired in 2011, so then he was able to get guns again in 2011. I think that this is a really important thing if we are looking at the side of the government staging this for gun control. Because this is saying, look, even though we tried to stop it, we still couldn't stop it. The answer isn't in curing mentally ill people, because look, that doesn't work. He had his firearms taken away for five years. The cure or the remedy for this is to have no guns because if there were no guns then it doesn't matter how crazy he is um you know and that's not what i believe by any means you someone will kill you with a jump rope if they really want to which is true by the way look that up it's crazy but um yeah but, i mean that's it's just ridiculous how they are trying to push this as oh look even though he was taken away from guns and even though he wasn't allowed to have them and legally couldn't have them he was legally able to have them again in 2011. So, you know, just kind of trying to show that even if we stop them in that way, they're still going to find guns and shoot us. Um, this is another thing that I found about his actual death itself, was that he died from multiple gunshot wounds. And now if we go back to remembering the pictures of him, Somebody had told me that there was an aerial photo of his body, of the scene where he's laying in front of the sign, and if anyone else can find me a link to that, that would be amazing, because my biggest thing is that if he died of multiple gunshot wounds, his head, which would be the only open place if he had that vest on, would be demolished, um, unless, you know, he did get somehow shot in the chest. I don't know if that's possible to shoot through a bulletproof vest. Perhaps it is. And lastly... <laughs> This is um, a perfect example of how the media twists things to their favor or to the official story's favor. I'm sure you can all remember that the day this happened, and there, are, there was article after article and there's video after video on YouTube, when this happened on the 7th, they said that this all happened in 10 minutes, and a lot of us went, whoa, wait a second, that's not possible for him to even walk that distance in 10 minutes. And now we're saying he had 1,300 rounds of ammunition plus combat boots and, and uh, you know, pockets full of ammo and a chest full of ammo and a bulletproof vest and a helmet and the AR-15 and a handgun. And he walked and did all of this in 10 minutes. Well, no, okay, then they released a couple days later and I said, saw that it said 13 minutes. Okay, that's a little more believable. Well, now they're really stretching it. So now they're saying, as of today, it was a 15-minute rampage. So that's just one perfect example of how the media will twist things. Whether um, there are conspiracies or not, this is flat-out proof that the media does twist things to get you to watch and believe what they will make money or profit off of. Or, you know, they, they'll just twist things to make you believe what they would like you to believe. So whether the, the motive for it is conspiracy-based or is just corporation and money-based, I'm not really sure, but it's just interesting. If you follow news articles, you will see them change over time. I, like I said, I literally saw this change from 10 to 13 to 15, and you can probably go back and see that for yourself. 
so I think I am going to wrap it up for today. I, like I said, we'll be releasing those breakdowns, kind of analyses, analyses, <laughs> analyses of the Joe Orkut and Beth Topping videos. And if you have anything to add that you would like me to add to my next video or talk about next time, I would love to hear it. Other than that, keep searching, guys. Hopefully we can find some more proof and expose this kind of stuff finally.